When a lot of people think of square one, they might think of memorizing a million algs and they might think of EP, which is the last above square one, which has uh, around 100 cases, I believe. So a lot of the newer square owners might believe, oh, there's 100 cases, you probably have to memorize an algorithm for each one of those. Even a lot of intermediate square runners are pretty eager to start learning EP algs and try to get an early head start on the 100 algs. However, I can guarantee you that learning EP algs is pretty dumb and not really important to solving square one. So for some examples, Rasmus, who held several WRs for square one, he knows I think less than 15 EPs. And people like Ethan Ares, he was the winner of last year's US Nationals for square one. He knows like five EPs, which is absolutely insane. Learning all the EP algs was maybe quite more popular before the G square one. So people like Brandon Lin, they usually learned a ton of EP algs, but these days I think it's really, really not important and I'll show you why. Since I do use CSP, I won't be talking about parity in this video, unfortunately, but you can use some techniques in this video and apply it with the parity algorithm and that can fix some EPs as well. So in my opinion, the best way to solve every EP without learning all a million algs is to solve every case relatively intuitively while making sure the slice count is as little as possible. Also, as a reminder, this is not a tutorial for EP for square one. This is just an intuitive way to solve pretty much every EP. And all of it, I'll just be showing you how you do it in general and you have to figure it out for every case for it. But it should be pretty simple to figure out. If you don't already know, M2 is also extremely important for EPs. But if you don't know the algorithm, it's just that, that, misaligned the top, align, misaligned bottom. This is pretty popular in square one. It's just called an M2 because it kind of does an M2 for the square one. So first off, let's sort of add add. This is pretty simple. It's the basic algorithm that everyone knows pretty much. So this is pretty important to know from different angles. So here's the back one. The way I would think about this intuitively is slice u M2 u prime slice. That's add add slice u M2 u prime slice. Stuff like this in the front also works. Slice d M2 d prime slice, that's add judge again, slice d prime m2, d prime slice. There's actually more angles you do add judge from. You can do stuff with the bottom is aligned like this, slice u prime m2, u slice, and that's add judge from this angle. So there's actually a ton of angles you can do add judge from, which is decently important in my opinion. You can also do opposite swaps with m2, so m2, u2, m2, that's op, op. And another way you can do this is the three slicer, which is not really an algorithm, but it's quite easy to remember. You do that, 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 that. So this, five, negative one, negative five, one. For that op, op, out, you just learn the optimal H from as well. So if you do that out once, and do a U prime and do it again. Now you did an H prime optimally, which is six slices. So, up, 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 up. So yeah, that was pretty simple. So whenever you can do something from the top, you can do something from the bottom as well. So if you do up, up, D, up, up, and then that's H prime from the bottom. Going back to M2s, now you can do Z primes. So you can do M2, U prime, M2, U M2, that does a Z perm. M2, U prime, M2, U M2. That's Z perm. Again, you can do the same thing at the bottom. M prime, D, M2, D prime, M2. So, you're just doing M2s in between every U or D move, and that does a Z perm. Z perms, you go one direction and back. If you go in one direction the whole way, then you get O up. So, M2. U prime, M2, U prime, M2. That gives O op. Now if you go the opposite direction, that solves the case. M2, U, M2, U, M2. Again, you can do the same thing for the bottom for op, O, and op, other O. Stuff like U primes are pretty simple for the top and bottom. They're done the same way. You can do them like this. Edge, 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 and that's actually optimal. So, edge is from back here and the edge edge from the back here and that solves a single u perm if you have a u perm and then a z perm on the bottom or vice versa it can be done the same back way do an edge edge from the top and bottom to solve the z perm edge like that 
and then to force the top to get an edge as well. So something like this. That's edge edge from the front, and now we're left with edge edge from the back. And that solves ZU or UZ or any combination of those in an optimal way with just using edge edges. Here's the double U perm. This one's the bad one. You can't actually cancel anything for this one. So for this one, I would do something like op op here and then edge edge from the back. Two outs, but still is optimal. Stuff like UH also pretty simple to solve. You can do something pretty fun actually. So for these ones, you can do JN like this and then do JN with the blocks aligned. And that solves the whole EP pretty nicely. So you can do that from the top and bottom layers for uh, any combo of U or H. The thing for U-perms though is that if you have the other U-perm like this, you have to misalign it first sometimes. Do the J-perm, then align it. So you kind of play around with those. Stuff like Z, H, and HZ are also pretty simple. What you just do is something like op op. And then you're left with op o, which is pretty simple. So yeah, stuff like that's pretty simple. You can do it like this too if H and top. It's the same exact thing, op op, and then op o, which is also easy. So you can also do stuff like setup moves. For example, here I have op edge. So what we can do is two slice setup move to bring this and turn it into edge. So to make this into edge, you kind of want to move this edge here, hide this edge, move this over and bring it back. Now I have an edge quote unquote. Now we do edge edge swap here, slice D and two D prime slice, and then undo those setup moves. And that solves op edge in a relatively optimal way. And you can do this for op edge and edge op. Now I'll go a bit into cancellation. This is also a pretty important part of doing square one. So let's try to do a double uh, U perm. So we can do it by op op and edge edge from the back and see how that's a double U perm. So the way you want to make this optimal is you do the op op. Instead of doing the last move, which is slice, and then the edge edge, which is another slice. You don't do the last move at all, and you go straight into the edge edge. Because it's a waste of time to just do slice slice, because that's dumb. So in the end, this elk looks like this. Which is optimal. And then you can play around with the reverse of it, which is like this, where you do edge edge first. Don't do the last slice of the edge edge, because that's dumb. Maybe it'll just go straight into the op op out, and that's also optimal. Cancellation is also pretty nice with awkward cases like this. We have O O. So for cases like this, you can do stuff like this. If you do something like a Z perm on bottom, now you get O op. But you already know O op from before. So instead of doing that last M two, so Z perm on bottom. So I'm doing this last M2, why not just cancel into this O-Op Elk. Now you just save a bunch of moves and that's optimal now. Stuff like ZZ with cancellation is also pretty nice. Edge edge from the front, edge edge in the back. So do edge edge in the front first maybe. Don't do the last slice because it's useless. Go straight into edge edge of the other side which is the back. And that solves the whole thing optimally. So edge edge in front. Edge edge in back, but cancel it. So edge in front, go straight to the back. There's actually another op op out which switches ops from the side, like this. So way to solve this is slice u prime d m two u d slice, or you can go the other way slice u u d prime m two u prime d slice. That solves op op from the side. So knowing that you can swap op op from the front. Up, up from the side to do a double H perm. So without cancellations, it'll be up, up like this. And then up, up from the side, which is double H perm. Now if you cancel it, it looks like this. Up, up, cancel to the side M2 thing, and then 
you're done. So for some awkward stuff like WW like this, you can do stuff like do the double H perm out, what we just did before, and then cancel into edge edge. And then that's still optimal, by the way. So yeah, so I'll start with the H perm, up up, cancel into the side thing. Now instead of going and finishing off the H perm like this, we can realize that this leads into edge edge like this. So we can just go ahead and just cancel straight into the edge edge. So it'll be something like this. H perm out with the cancellation. And here we're gonna cancel into edge from the end by doing this and then the M tube again, which does the edge edge. So the out for WW ends up being like this. Do an H perm and then do this. But instead of doing slice and then edge edge, go straight into the edge edge by doing the M2. H perm. Here, you do edge edge, but cancel into it here. You can also do stuff like W edge by doing uh, edge edge into double W perm. So for here, edge edge in the back, edge in the back, like that. Here's your double W perm. So what we can do is double W perm. Cancel into the op op, cancel into the edge edge, and that solves w edge. And you can do something pretty similar to the bottom layer as well. For the rest of the cases, you can always do some kind of edge edge into w du perm combo. I showed all these combos before in a video that I already made, so I won't go through all of them in this video, but you can check out the video in the description if you want to check out all those combos. But here's an example I have w op, which is not good, so you can do edge edge from this angle from the back. And now you're left with a double D perm. So this one's just an edge into op. Um, cancellation, so edge edge in the back. Cancel into op op. I'm not sure if it's optimal, but it's pretty close. So I guess I'll briefly talk about parity and techniques with parity. So parity EVs is the only argument I think there are for learning algs because they actually makes a bit more sense. But again, parity EP algs are super long, so I don't think they're worth learning anyway. Here's an example of how you can use parity though with this method in this video. So, so you can choose where you want to do parity from to give you the best EP. So if I do it from here, switch this, I get op edge, which is not horrible, but it's not great. If I do the edge edge from here, I get uh, edge edge, which is much better. If I do at parity from the bottom, if I know how to do that, I get single U perm, which is not, again, as great as edge edge. So I can just do parity from here. And now I'll have edge edge, which is the best combo for that case. So as you can see from this video, every EP out can be solved relatively intuitively with pretty much no algs. So hopefully you can understand why I think EP is useless to learn really. I think that doing stuff like this is much better and you learn less algs and you kind of understand the puzzle more as well. One mistake I do see a lot is people solve one EPLO at a time. So they solve the bottom EPLO first, then they solve the top EPLO. This is a bit inefficient. And instead of doing out to solve that EP case, what we can do is find out ways to solve that EP case in a way that you're solving both at the same time, pretty much. Pretty much, it's usually just a combination of edge, edge, op, ops, uh, stuff like that. Maybe some M2 spam here and there, but it's pretty relatively simple. The only thing that might be a bit confusing is cancellations, but once you get the hang of it, it should be pretty simple. And the idea is just Instead of doing a slice twice, just go straight into the other out. So hopefully you can understand that technique and it's actually used in quite a bit of puzzles. So it's quite important to know. The general rule for EP for square one is if it's longer than 10 slices or 11 slices, then you probably are doing something wrong. And you should probably be looking at what better solutions you can do for that EP. So hopefully this video was a bit helpful. If there are any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And hopefully this convinced you to not learn EP algs do EP a bit more intuitively.